Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. That minute will eight star things. So let's get through these um, these risk warnings. So, we're going to start off looking at, um, at equity markets, some of the more popular products that we offer. So, the, the US 30, the UK 100, Germany 30, sort of covers that. US, European, UK, angle on equities. What you'll find is they all look fairly similar. And that does make sense because the, the reasons for some of the more dramatic movements that we've seen in the last few weeks have pretty much all been of a sort of global nature. You know, namely a lot of the, the, the China orientated stuff and the, uh, the prospect of a, a rate hike in the US. Uh, and so we've known that the US are gearing towards a rate hike for a while, but now it's getting perilously close. Um, the, uh, you know, we're, we're um, uh, it's two weeks away essentially from a, from a possible US rate hike. And um, when it was it's been summer trading, so uh, liquidity is is um, lower in the summer. Generally, causes sharper market movements. China devalued the currency, and we've we've seen equity markets fall off a cliff. Now, I want to pull up some of the charts here. It's entirely possible that we formed a base for now in, in equities um, in these, some of these indices. I'll start with um, since we mentioned the U.S. and uh, the prospect of a rate hike there. I'm going to start with the U.S pull out to a weekly chart. This is the US 30, the Dow, really. And, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty clear to see why we spiked quite massively off this level, corresponded with the low here. Listen, I mean, not, lows don't always work. We went straight through this low. But this one did correspond to the 200-week moving average, and we pulled off pretty massively. Now, we closed down the following week after that big recovery. Now, that's not a good sign. And to me, you may be wondering what these, these X's are on the chart. I've drawn them in um, just to remind myself what the, uh, what the trend is here. So these larger X's denoting the kind of weekly trend, what I'm looking at is, you know, that to me is more of a significant peak, but really any candle that has a couple of closes down on the either side, I'm calling a peak. And so you can see the last two major weekly peaks that we formed, none of, none of these down here really classify because they haven't had two candles closed on either side um, on the weekly chart. So these two, the last two, at the, in and around the top were, were lower. And then this is the um, last weekly close that we had that you could really kind of call um, a, a low because it had two higher, higher closes either side. And this, this one will be at the end of this week if we don't drop below there. At the moment, I'm just calling it a little x, which is a daily. Uh, we're above the 200-week moving average. You know, that did correspond with the, um, the low over here to help it be support, but it's not something I as follow. Uh, I, I follow that much, and I don't think it's something that the market follows as, that, as much as a major indicator. So to me, just because we're above the 200-week uh, moving average, um, yes, it's supportive, but to me, it's not um, the be-all and end-all as to what the direction of the trend is. Now, like I said, it was still, generally speaking, thought of as being in a bull market for equities, but to me, the trend is down right now on a weekly and a daily basis. And so I'm not looking to get long just yet in the market. That's just... That's just how I view things. I, I realize that we could have based, but I want to see some, some reversal of the shorter time frame trends, namely the daily trend, to, to feel confident enough to get in again here. Now, that's starting to happen. Here's these two X's denoting the kind of last two major daily. Again, I haven't put one here just because we haven't closed today yet. So there's only one lower close either side of this peak. Um, we've, got, we've got the two higher lows here. So we've got you know, lower, lower highs, but a higher low. So it kind of puts the trend a bit uncertain at the moment. Really, what you'll see is that there's a 16,000 here. The pattern looks very similar in the UK 100 we'll look at in a minute with a 6,000. Here in the Dow, it's the, the 16,000 level. And that's basically where we put this, this second higher low in. If we break below that, this is cancelled. The downtrend to me is resuming, and we're at least getting a test down towards the lows in that sort of 15,400 vicinity. But should we push against, uh, not so much this high, but up against here, obviously enough, right, that puts us into a, not only a higher low, 
but a higher high too. And even so, so we're below the 200 day moving average. So we've still got to be a little bit careful at targeting on new all time highs. We're probably not going to be that optimistic. Um, but the, the daily trend will be higher and uh, we can feel a bit more confident about going long, even though the weekly trend is in fact would still be lower at that point. Now, it's, uh, it's Labor Day in the U.S. today, so we're not going to get too much movement, I suspect, in uh, the U.S. 30. And to be honest with you, we didn't get that much, even though it maybe felt a bit tumultuous last week. U.S. 30, not as crazy last week as it has been. Um, you know, the U.S. probably was the most volatile of all of them. If we look at the, the Germany 30, you know, our proxy for the DAX, if we zoom out to the weekly chart here, basically an, an, an inside week where the, the high of the week just about thereabouts didn't take out the high of the previous week and nowhere near took out the low of the previous week. So inside, one week is inside the other. So pretty directionless. But you can see similar general idea here where the last two major weekly peaks were down. We're in the, in the, in the midst of forming a, a lower low on the weekly chart, so the trend is down. But like that 200-week moving average in the the US 30, we do have quite a decent rising tr uh, trend line here, which I'm sure a lot of you have on your charts, and I certainly won't be the only one to uh, to have on this chart uh, in, uh, as far as other analysts and, uh, and traders out there. Um, this will be well seen. Now, it's only got two touches, but this last one did bounce nicely off it, and it did correspond to that previous low. So that's where we got the bounce. It wasn't quite as dramatic as the, the U.S. bounce. And equally, this little move here wasn't quite as forthright to the downside just because we didn't bounce as much in the first place in terms of uh, you know, the week before last and then the kind of resulting move, down move last week. You can see on the RSI chart, this has been our support for quite a long time. The previous trend line bounce is also where we're bouncing at the moment. So if you're not familiar, worth a little bit of research on uh, an inside day, candle pattern or an inside um, week, also known as Harami, if you're looking at just the bottom, just, just the bottoms as far as a Japanese candlestick pattern, but you can trade it as a breakout. So if we break above the, the highs of the, the first week, it's a... Um, uh, you know, so it's a, it's, it's a possibility for going long, according to this strategy. If we break below, either conservatively below the lows of the first week, or more aggressively below the low of the second week, that's a breakout lower and, and a possible short position. Generally not best to trade it by itself, but, um, you know, in combination with some other technical indicators to confirm, you know, it's, um, it's a known pattern. So that's something to, to call a look out for on the, on the longer term frame. And again, you'll notice a pretty similar pattern where we've just formed this um, higher low. So we're kind of in the midst of a correction of the sharp downtrend that we got after the China devaluation, the currency devaluation. And we're not quite sure whether we're able to take it higher yet. Had a, had a, we pulled back off that previous high. We've been down since then. And so then uh, the real trigger will be in the Germany, uh, Germany 30, it's the 10,000 level really that we're watching out for. We did get a close below there, but we popped back up again last week. So we'll be, have to be mindful of that possibility. But really, we want some substantial close below 10,000 to tell us we can go back to the lows and, um, you know, potentially lower. Now, as far as, uh, as, far as big events this week, uh, we've got – it's all about trade balances tomorrow. Um, so if you remember, it was the China trade balance data where there was a massive drop in exports that actually triggered them to devalue the currency in the first place. So, so that will be probably one of the most interesting pieces of data to watch uh, tomorrow, especially will be that China trade data, which obviously was released early. But we do have the same thing for, um, for Germany uh, and France as well. Um, on the, you know, it's probably a better week for for UK data in general. So that being said, let's pull up the UK 100. Here you will be. You know, it's a daily chart. We'll get to that in a second. UK, if anything, is looking like one of the weaker charts that we have. 
to me, this was the clear area of support where we'd failed to, to get through on multiple occasions, that 6,000 level. Got up through, found support multiple times. Here we got below it. And we pushed up and kind of closed in and around it. Um, but the fact we got this far below, to me, is a, is a bit of a sign of weakness. And we have closed below this fairly obvious trend line. And the, uh, we're well below the 200-week moving average as well. Dropping down to that familiar-looking daily chart, higher low again, like the other indices, and here the 6,000 level is the one that we need to break down to show us that this is just a little correction of what's going to be a renewed downtrend. Now, we don't know if it will take up the low yet, but the, the general source of the trend where we're below the averages, below the broken trend line, et cetera, would, would suggest that we will. Um, but as I mentioned, we've got UK industrial production tomorrow. Uh, also, the UK manufacturing, manufacturing production comes along with that tomorrow, as long as the UK trade balance tomorrow. But the biggest one will be Thursday when we have the, the rate decision from the Bank of England. Uh, now, these have got more interesting recently because they post the minutes at exactly the same time as they do the decision. So we immediately know how many members voted for um, keeping things on hold or concurrently voted for a rate hike. Last time it was just one, one member, McCafferty, who voted for a rate hike. And so we'll have to see if anyone's joined him. But given the fact that oil prices have fallen off a cliff, inflation has, um, has been lowered, uh, and inflation forecasts and expectations are down, probably no one's going to join him. At the fringes, maybe one person, but it's pretty unlikely there'll be a rate hike. So, you know, holding off on a rate hike uh, on the face of it, uh, you know, there's two ways of looking at it. It's, um, it's not a good sign for the UK economy necessarily, um, but it is good from the prospect that companies still get to borrow at low rates and um, the you know, housing market still gets some support from the uh, low mortgage rates, which does feed through into consumer pockets uh, at a time when wages do seem to be rising. So, you know, there's low inflation, and that's the reason they're not hiking interest rates, but that low inflation is largely because of oil prices. And so the economy still seems to be improving, although there's been a bit of a slowdown in some economic data recently, which explains why the pound has been so weak, and we'll have a look at the pound in a minute. But generally, fundamentally, the UK economy looks good, but just the FTSE 100, um, you know, you've got to look elsewhere in terms of catalysts because it's not so much about the UK economy. It's, it's a lot about the nature of, a con uh, of commodities and the commodity stocks that we have on here and some of the more beaten up sectors like banks, which we've just heard today, may face billions more in fines. And um, um, you know, the oil companies, uh, which again are expo exposed to lower oil prices, and uh, in the supermarkets, where uh, we have news today, Tesco sold, had to sell off a profitable business um, just to focus on a, a home where they're losing market share. So some of these big weighted things in the FTSE, uh, weighted companies in the FTSE 100 not doing so well, hence the index is not doing so well, even though the economy in general is doing all right. So it's a difficult one to, to trade the FTSE at the moment, difficult one to trade fundamentally. You know, better to look at just exactly what the companies on the, on the FTSE 100 are doing, which don't necessarily ebb and flow according to the UK economy. Um, we do, I believe, did I miss out? Um, no, CP, CPI inflation data is next week for the UK, uh, but CPI data for Germany is on Friday. So since we did touch briefly on the pound there, let's switch over to currencies. Now we're looking um, looking a lot better in the pound today, and you, you can see this. You know, I've not just drawn this on today. This has been on my chart for a good while now, and it's well, it's just been on my chart. We had the big spike reversal there. We found support there, in and around that vicinity, um, and now we're bouncing pretty nicely off there. And if today stays as it is, just about edging out a bullish engulfing pattern. 
which is a uh, bullish reversal off the bottom of the range. So that would be a confluence of um, coming out of oversold on the RSI, a bullish candlestick pattern off a former support level, um, which would kind of keep us in track with uh, this sort of high sideways range that we find ourselves in. Got to be careful. We're below the 200-day moving average, but that just has less significance when we're not in a trending environment. We're, we're really in the range right now, so that, that's what takes precedent. You know, we're um, in, a, in an environment where just over, uh, overbought is an opportunity for buying and oversold is not uh, sorry is an opportunity for selling uh, and over oversold is an opportunity for buying rather than buying at overbought levels as you might do in a, in a trend. Mm. Uh, but we did, uh, worth mentioning that we had, I think, nine days in a row of um, of the pound closing lower, which is something that hasn't happened in quite a few years. And so, yeah, sentiment pretty negative on the pound, um, but concurrently also sentiment pretty bullish on the, uh, on the dollar because we're still eyeing up that September rate hike from the Fed. But as we just discussed, less likely from the Bank of England. Now, obviously, should the Bank of England catch us out on Thursday, we could see a real extension off the bottom of that range for cable here. So a possible fundamental driver for higher prices. And um, for the moment, I suggest that, that this bullish pattern that we're seeing today is just at the range support. And it's, you know, it's people who have been short for nine days thinking, well, we've had a pretty good run, nine days. And we've also got this fundamental risk of the Bank of England, who probably aren't going to say too much different, but could. And so that's a reason to take take money off the table on, a, on any short cable positions for the time being. And um, if we judge on this candlestick pattern, potentially good long position. Although obviously, yeah, hard to see what the bank could really say. It's too supportive of the pound, given the inflation outlook. Uh, let's have a look at the euro. Um, I think that was just me tracking it pretty short term for the... Uh, non-farm payrolls, which we had last week, which I haven't mentioned yet. Um, if, you, if you haven't read around and got the general just on that, on that number, the headline number came in below expectations, which um, typically in itself is, is dollar negative. And we originally saw, a move, you know, immediately after the release, we saw a move down in the dollar, but that was quickly reversed. And the dollar finished, uh, well, after, after that initial surge, just closed strongly, tapered back a little bit after that, but um, the reason for that reversal was we did see quite a, you know, quite a um, surprising lift in wages and uh, the unemployment rate dropped down to 5.1%, which is close to what the Federal Reserve called full, full employment. So you know, in terms of their labor market mandate, which, you know, they have the two mandates, one for inflation, one for um, unemployment. As far as the unemployment one, they're pretty much there. <laughs> so it's just the inflation that's a worry at the moment. Um, you know, if oil prices stay low for longer, it's just going to make it less likely that, the, that they're going to reach their 2% inflation target anytime soon. So the question is, do they... Do they look through oil prices and a prolonged period of low inflation and hike interest rates anyway? That's, that's the big question, really. Now, um, worth looking at the weekly chart for the euro. Look at that. I'm mean, sure you've seen that, but um, you know, just in the context to hear those previous weekly highs, we broke out and just cataclysmically closed lower. We haven't really built on it, but that was just such a huge reversal. There's only so much downside momentum you can have at one time. So from going from looking pretty positive with a kind of rising trend line and a break of the highs to make form a higher high, um, it's looking a bit more negative in the euro now. And um, I could maybe see us breaking this rising trend line and uh, maybe even the maybe even the support just, just off that big bearish candlestick pattern, which anyone who cares to look at these longer time frames won't want to be trading against that. Conversely, of course, you've got to always admit when you're wrong. And uh, if we do trade through that, that would be a really bullish signal. So um, number one rule of trading, prepare to be wrong. And when you are wrong, reverse the, reverse the position because that will normally be the right one. 
So shorter term here in the euro, again, looking pretty weak because we weren't even able to bounce off these two peaks, which would be a logical place. We dropped through it, got a little tepid bounce. Now we're down below it again, which is what leads me to think that even if we get a bounce towards the highs again here, I wouldn't see us getting through. Uh, I suspect we're dropping down to this trend line again, which a lot of people should have on their charts, but fourth time test, uh, for a fifth time test even. Um, it will correspond probably with that low by the time we get there over here. So confluence of support could see a little bounce, but I, my default assumption would be that we're breaking it. Not to mention that we'll be, we're back below the 200-day moving average here, which you can see we kind of moved up, bounced off and, and lower. Over to Dolly Yen. So this has been a pretty volatile chart, namely because the um, the yen's considered a bit of a safe haven, so um, and, and stocks are considered risky. So generally, stocks and the yen move in opposite directions. Stocks and dollar yen move in the same direction. So um, yen actually, you know, if you are using that correlation with the, the yen and stocks, the yen's moved down a lot more than. Uh, Sorry, dollar yen has moved down a lot more than the stock market has, so could actually imply that we've got a bit more downside to go in, in stocks. Below the 200-day moving average, and I haven't drawn the X's on, but you know, similar pattern, isn't it? Um, you know, we're clearly making lower lows, made lower highs up here, pretty much a double top pattern, which um, this objective was in and around this 116 area, I believe, might be 115. <clears throat> Um, but we've, you know, we've broken this rising trend line, come off, broken down through there, come back, failed to get above the 200 day, and now we're heading down again. So, to me, looking pretty bearish. Um, and did manage to form a higher, high, higher low there, but we've already rolled over in the dollar yen. Uh, whereas in the equities, we're kind of hovering in this kind of vicinity. If you can picture the same thing, if I zoom in a bit. We haven't taken out this low yet in equities, and dollar yen we have. So lower low in the, on the daily chart as well. Can't really use that as a high, but that clearly lower highs there. Any questions at all on the uh, sort of things I'm talking about here? Obviously, um, if I'm saying anything too quick or not explaining myself properly, you know, happy to uh, to explain again. Um, equally, any um, other markets you want me to cover? Now be the time because we've got about five minutes left of this uh, of the webinar today. Let's, um, for the time being, jump over to commodities. Let's have a look at gold. Oops. Okay, always worth looking at a longer time frame first. So. This is what keeps me pretty negative on gold and the long-term perspective. Um, you know, I'm still a, um, a seller on bounces in, in, in gold because of this declining trend line. You know, this is a longer-term perspective, but you just got to look at where we are. At the moment, we've got this fairly nicely defined down sloping trend line as well. So even though it's tempting for us to think maybe there's a base being formed here after this nice little couple of week rally in gold, Really, we're still in the kind of concept. We're still in the in the vicinity of um, uh, just selling on bounces opportunities. So we're already starting to see this roll off. Now, if we can't take out the lows, we've got to change our perspective a little bit. But um, you can see that this was the kind of long-term base in gold that we've slipped below, come back, retested thereabouts. Now we could get up there and push a little bit higher into that. Nothing's perfect. But you can see generally what's happening here. My default assumption is that we do take out the lows, and that's just uh, that's just following the trend. You know, just uh, keep assuming the trend will go keep going until it's finally proved itself broken. So we've had a little dip here. So we had a um, you know it's not it's okay. Let's drop down to the daily chart to see it's a bit better. <clears throat> we've had um, higher highs put in. Now, unfortunately, we've had a um, lower low put in, lower high. We're right in the vicinity of putting in a um, 
you know, we're based, if I just draw a line in, you know, there's no support that we, uh, no surprise, sorry, that we, we closed in there on Friday and we're hovering just above this line. <clears throat> because from going from, why well, that X here to trending higher on the daily time frame, we banged into that weekly declining trend line. Now we've dropped off, failed to take out the uh, the highs again by any stretch, and now we're pushing into the support. So if we drop below here, to me the down longer term downtrend is resuming, and we're heading down to the lows, potentially lower. <coughs> and uh, RSI looking a bit like a head and shoulders pattern here as well, which you you do get um, <coughs> right on the 50 line as well. So RSI, we've already taken out the 50 line. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, a sign that price may be about to do the same. Excuse me. Uh, we don't have time. Uh, let's have a look at silver. Now, silver was looking distinctly better because we hadn't taken out the lows of the year. Was that, was that November? Oh, okay, it was November. So we have we did make new lows for the year, but then uh, we still held on to that November low until that until that week, um, which was um, looks like the last week in August. Uh, and um, yeah, we just what was looking promising. Same as in gold, where we had a little bounce, thought maybe we'd put a base in, and then just crashed and rolled over. Silver's trading a bit more like copper at the moment than it is gold. Um, gold trades quite well as a safe haven. Silver, not so much. <clears throat> and so, uh, a very indecisive inside week la uh, last week, and again, sort of inside week trade. If we take out the low here and close below it, suggesting that we're probably dropping well below 14. Bit choppy on the daily chart. Um, yeah, pretty hard to trade at the moment. You could, you know, that, you know, look out for obvious uh, reversal points in the past because uh, they can work. Um, you know, vaguely speaking, we put in a double top, dropped down to new lows. We were kind of bounced. Uh, that looks to me, I haven't actually done this year, but it looks about 50%. We can see here that these two candles hit the 50, and then this one almost pushed up to the, um, you know, the correspondence of those two highs. And the 61.8 is just a bit above, starting to roll over again in silver. We're probably not going to seriously head to new lower lows until the Fed actually hike rates. I think if they if they don't hike rates um, in what is it, two in a week in two weeks' time. So we may have put actually a bit of base in and silver and gold for a while. Uh, if they do, you know, that's, I think, the trigger for us dropping well down. Let's move over to oil in the last few minutes we have here. Uh, Brent first. So, yeah, oil was going pretty fascinating. We had that massive... Rally where we we came off the um, off the lows here, so we hit new six and a half year lows, and then we just uh, rebounded ten percent. That was in in one day, and then the next day I think it was eight percent. Next day it was sort of five percent or something, <clears throat> and then we dropped off about eight percent the next day. So some wild moves going on, some some big profitable trades possible here if you're on the right side of it, but. Um, but now, we're, now it's the question mark as to whether this, uh, you know, whether this correction was just a big short covering rally and we're dropping straight down again. I tend to think we may try and try and push into the um, the lows of this this range, and then I think we might hold up. You know, that kind of the intensity of that rally to me suggests people aren't going to try and push the lows just yet. We might have a bit higher to go. But that being said, the trend is down. If you're looking at the 200 day moving average. But um, but we have taken out, you know, if I'm drawing X's, that would be an X there, and that'd be a higher X up here. And um, 
that be an X down there, an X down there. So like daily chart has sort of turned into a little uptrend, but it's just getting threatened with being reversed at the moment, but not quite there. So holding above this low looks good that this this rally could extend, even if we drop down to the I think the bottom of this range, which worked before. We might still be good for a low value reversal to push higher again. Let's see how WTI compares with that. Difficult to, to judge oil fundamentally at the moment. We know we all know the situation. We know that the uh, market's massively oversupplied. The only thing we can really look at is U.S. inventories data. That's out on Wednesday as it is every week. And um, just be aware of when there's, um, you know, OPEC release their monthly report. And um, be aware of any comments from um, from OPEC, OPEC ministers. There's still an outside chance of an emergency OPEC meeting. But we've not heard much from about that in the last week or so. So it was sort of pushed for by uh, Venezuela, I believe, but not to really been much response from the likes of Saudi Arabia on it. Iran would also want it, but um, I haven't heard of it actually happening yet. So this this spike was largely short covering on the prospect of that meeting possibly happening. And I think we might get another little spike if it actually gets announced, or maybe just a, maybe just anyway. Um, WTI has not come off as much as Brent. Brent's actually closer down here into the um, into the lows from from Wednesday. But we are getting a little bit of RSI um, bearish divergence, not so much bearish divergence, but it's sort of <clears throat> like a lower lower peak um, because the, the market also formed a lower peak here. But just suggested if we take up that little low at, at 50, um, then you know we, just, we haven't managed to push beyond 60. We drop below 60, uh, below 50 in the RSI. You know the kind of the uh, momentum has just turned. Bearish again. Okay, that's about it for this week. A couple of minutes over, but we did start a couple of minutes late, so I hope that was useful. Good luck with trading this week. I'll catch you at the same time next week. Jasper Lawler signing out.